This is Sims, and we are back with a more variable barricade, and I should not try to multitask when I'm doing things. Okay, holy Christ. Uh, I'm trying to change my game, my volume in my headset, because, you know, the background's really loud to me, man. Like, holy shit. <laughs> so, I'm just going to say, is everyone enjoying our change in recording software? Because now you can actually hear the background. Because, like, before you... I mean, it's still very faint, but, like, it's there. I Even playing the game before with my TV on, I couldn't hear the background. Like, wow. Yeah, there's, like, people mumbling and shit. I feel like it's going to be a hell of a lot loud. I Look. Look. I haven't processed any of the videos for Xion's part. I kind of just bulk, like, record a bunch, and then I process once a week. So... If things and the volumes and the sounds are all off, I've done the best I could. Like, it seems to be okay, but I'm not going to know until I go through and I'm like, oh, yeah, no, it's it's terrible. Like, my spot checks seem to be fine, but. But, yeah, you can actually hear shit in the background now. So are we enjoying this more? Maybe we just keep using freaking action, but then I have to change the settings for every freaking thing. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <sighs> It beats everything cutting off every few minutes. So, yeah. Anyway, so we're back. We're still in Xion's route. He was about to go accost our grandfather. And, yeah, so whatever fancy dinny, dinner party. Dinny party? The dinny party. Oh, my God. Stop it. I can't. Good Lord. Anyway, so. I beg your pardon, Sir Takamune. I'd like a moment of your time. Hey, if you come to wine, I got nothing to baby. I'm not going to baby you. That was my unvarnished opinion. I know, and that's precisely why I wanted to speak with you. That was the first time someone said that about me. I'd like to hear more of your thoughts. Huh. <laughs> At least you know how to speak properly. Actually, I was curious about you. Someone told me there was an interesting young man in attendance. Some people said you were as beautiful as an angel's. Others called you handsome. Also, some described you as energetic and friendly, while others said you were polite and straight-laced. And whatever people need me to be, apparently, right? Is that strange? I don't think they're describing the same person. Normally, everyone would have similar impressions. No matter how well people try to hide it, their true natures always come out. That's what makes us human. But I knew as soon as I laid eyes on you, you have no identity of your own. <laughs> oh, Grandpa. Identity? That's right. You have the bad habit of shaping your identity into whatever ideal someone wants from you. From my perspective, that's reprehensible. You're like a cloud that changes shape every time you look at it. Right now, you look like an idiot. I'm just kidding. <laughs> my granddaughter would be extremely interested in you. Oh, she's much too obstinate and lacks charm. Your granddaughter, sir? Yeah, have a look. She's over there. He gestured to the back of the hall. Oh! This is like a little CG of me! I look beautiful! Look at how- Oh! Look at how charming and lovely we look! Oh, I like it! We're over there like, Hello, hi, yes, I'm a lady. Yes, dear, okay, yes, uh-huh. Prim and proper lady. I like it. A breathtakingly beautiful young lady stood out from among the crowd. Wearing a gorgeous dress, she greeted those around her with a flawless smile. At first glance, she appeared as sophisticated as you'd expect of the heiress of one of Japan's most prestigious families. But... Oh! And now there's beautiful Shion gazing at us, longingly. I'm here for this. Okay. She seems... distressed. I can't tell just by looking, but I have a feeling that she's tense or something. What do you think of my foolish granddaughter? I think she's beautiful. Takamuni's like, really? That's it? That's the only person? I mean, what am I supposed to be like? I think she's a very insightful young woman. I'm just looking across the room. <laughs> but also, a fragile and vulnerable. Inside, she's youthful and delicate, but she's covered with thorns to conceal those parts of herself. It's just like a young rose. Ha! <laughs> so that's what you see. I told him what I thought without dressing it up in flattery. Surprisingly, he seemed satisfied. You might work after all. You might be able to break down the barricades my embittered, 
foolish granddaughter is fortified. What do you mean? It's simple. She on, was it? If you're game, you can take her on. What kind of what? That's a weird way to phrase it. I don't like this phrasing, Grandpa. What? Provided, of course, that you can get Spacey to take an interest in you. There may be more to this than meets the eye. And normally I would have casually avoided a conversation like this. Now, however, my gaze turned back to her. I just love the way he's looking at us. <laughs> my lifestyle right now can oh, can be quite nice. Just going with the flow and being wanted. But in the end, all they want is Amethyst. And not me for who I am. But what if... What if I could find someone who truly wants me, regardless of my past as Amethyst? And what if I could live for one person instead of many? Couldn't I then feel happiness unlike any I've felt before? Oh my god, the CG just like changed now. We're like in a freaking thorn cage. Hey! We're in a cage! It's imaginary, and it's made of thorns, but it counts, alright? Finally. <laughs> Here you go, here's your cage. It's an emotional cage, but it counts, I think, you know? Spacey Tojo, a young lady entirely surrounded by barricades. Her walls protected her, but surely they also prevented her from reaching out. I mean, there's thorns. Would you try to reach out through that shit? It hurts. I'd know what she'd need just by looking, and I know I could give her what she wants. And more importantly, we'd make a great pair. A great what? A great pair. I'm sure we'd work well together. I have a feeling. Huh. All right, then. I'll be in touch. Give you more details, then. Thank you very much, sir. Little did he know he's like, cool. And then he's like, wait, I have to battle it out with these chuckle fucks? But then, on Shion's perspective, okay, the one who just wants to be your bodyguard and is like a chihuahua. I'm sorry, Labradoodle. All right, I got that. The one over here is kind of gruff and a bit standoffish and an asshole. Yeah, okay. Cheesy McCheeserson. Uh, could be cut. Nope, there he goes with the cheesy lines. I'm in. <laughs> Ichi is really your only competition, Shion, but he's so fucking cheesy that after about four things that come out of his mouth, you're like, and I'm a I can win this. Never mind. I'm fine. Look. Look, I'm just saying from Shion's perspective, right? He then walked away from me with a satisfied smile on his face. And now here I am, in this house as one potential groom. Having four candidates was admittedly unexpected, but life here is exciting and I'm slowly getting to know her better, little by little, so it's not bad at all. Besides... I'm sure in the end, Spacey will choose me. I kind of feel bad that there's like three other routes where he's saying the same shit to himself and we don't choose him. And he watches us absolutely choose the Labradoodle. And that's got to be weird. <laughs> I can't yawn like Shan, I'm sorry. But I can't also read the word yawn without doing it, so... After that trip down memory lane, I finally started getting sleepy. It's time to head back to my room and sleep. I have a feeling I'll dream about her. Great pair clear! Were there no choices in that one either? Apparently not. Next is, is this love? I'm decidedly drawn to Shion, but not sure what to do. I asked Samugi and Arimura for advice. Oh yay, good, there's Arimura back. She's been missing this whole fucking time. We were relaxing together after dinner when we saw Rue again. He was on TV. Today we're walking around a stylish new gallery in Roppongi. Social media charm idol. How does he know him? We have the scoop. And our special guest is... Hi there, I'm Rue Sheena. Rue Sheena. <laughs> Rue, I heard that you often visit this gallery. Is that true? Hamp. I love looking at pictures and photos. There was a Leclerc exhibit here recently, and I went, like, every day. 
Every day? Wow, that's impressive. By the way, I heard you met someone pretty amazing during the exhibition. <laughs> Trending. Who is this mysterious beauty? I mean, like, he absolutely looks like the photo. The eyes are just, like, glowing. His eyes are so much more faint, like, unless you get into CGs. That's right, you were in a magazine. Who is that man in the picture with you? I can't say, but maybe you can tell just by looking at him. Oh, go on, tell us. Nope, it's my super special secret. <clears throat> I can't do his voice right now. But you know what? It was really hard to take the photo there. I was so short I had to get on a stepladder to be in the photo. How <laughs> fun. But tell us, how did you two meet? <laughs> it's a secret. <clears throat> Being rude just makes me hate myself a little bit. I'm just saying. Who is even interested in the story now? Dude, Shion, ain't that you? Hmm? Yeah, I read the weekly magazine that the photo was in. It's super cool. Shion, you're like a celebrity. You read those kind of magazines, Nayuta? And the grannies in the park showed it to me. They were all like, what a hottie. I can't do Nayuta's voice anymore. <laughs> Nayuta's route broke me. I've noticed the whole time. I'm like, I can't do Nayuta anymore. Wait a minute. Was this photo taken the same day you two had your sneaky date? Ah, oh, so that's also at the Leclerc ex exhibition. Well, I... What? You were there too, Speezy? You should have had your photo taken with them too. She was, in fact, photographed. However... I was able to seize the photos of her. How dare that motherfucker. I just... I love Kazuka so much. I also like it. we just slid right the fucking... She did have a photo and I stole that shit! <laughs> we cannot afford to have her dragged into an unnecessary scandal. Aw, that's a bummer. <laughs> fucking Nayuta. What? And this is not something to be sad about. If a photo of her gets released into the wild, we'll have even more competitors. Way to just priorities there, Ichia. My dear Spacey's so beautiful and sweet. <laughs> okay. All right. It's been two minutes. So, okay, good. He was about time he, he did that. Your dear? Oh, he's winking at us too. Look at the fucking cheesy wink. Ah, oh, God, I love Ichia. Oh. I'm sure the fuss will die down soon. I don't think you need to worry too much about it. That's how it is with celebrity junk, anyway. Yeah, I'm sure pictures like this are a dime a dozen. After that conversation, everyone turned their focus back to the TV. In the meantime, Xi'an was perusing a fashion magazine as usual. Does Xi'an really not mind? Besides Rue, there's... Leclerc. Is something wrong, Spacey? She had noticed that I'd been studying his handsome profile and flashed me a beautiful smile. Uh, oh, uh, nothing? You sure? And then how about you come over here and look through this magazine with me? Uh, there are some clothes that you might... Th that's okay! Why not? Uh, maybe I should come over to you then. Huh? No, really, it's okay! What's up with you, babe? Uh, it's nothing! In the end, all I could do was get out of there. It happened again. I sighed quietly to myself when I got back to my room. I was definitely acting suspicious. No wonder they think I'm weird. It's no use. I haven't been able to look at Xion normally since that day. Oh, the holding of hands in the cafe. I mean, like, seriously, look at how goddamn beautiful his face is. These guys like sleepy little eyes. I'll accept you wholly as you are and protect that vulnerable heart of yours. I want you to feel safe with me. Just so much about this is complicated. Okay, focus. I'll do my homework and calm down so I stop acting like a weirdo. Is that all it takes? That explains a lot. I don't have homework to do. Because I haven't been in school in a long time, that's understandable why I act like a weirdo then. Because the only way to not be a weirdo is, uh, you know. Um, hello, computer. Thank you. I, I just like to every once in a while go check. 
Because <laughs> I'm like, are we at three hours? Are we at 15 minutes? Okay. But my mouse wasn't working. Anyway. Yeah, I'm a weirdo because I don't have homework to do. That stops you from being a weirdo, apparently. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <sighs> anyway. The following day, everything started with a comment Samugi made at lunch. And by the way, Speezy, have you checked Rue's social media lately? No, not really. In fact, I hadn't had any contact with Rue since the day of the incident. Good, should delete his frickin' contact information, that little punk bastard. I received an apology message on Wiss not long after it happened, but I didn't reply. Shan doesn't seem angry, but it's still tricky. Rue is also Rue, though. He won't say anything about it, even if I don't reply to him. But I didn't tell Samugi that Rue had used me. When she asked about the photo, I only confirmed Shion was in it. So, is there anything going on with Rue? It seems like he's been a little down lately. Down? Even though he got what he wanted and took a proper picture with Shion? Yes, you see the photo of Rue and Shion get picked up by the media. And many people are apparently frustrated that he didn't talk about Shion at all. Really? Yes, apparently Amethyst is a kind of sacred topic for the Clark fans. And so to them, it seemed like Rue was trying to keep Shion all to himself. And some of those fans have been harassing and threatening Rue directly. This is not Samugi's voice. I don't know. Anyway, but here's the funny part. It just dawned on me. She's like talking like, you're a Leclerc fan, blah, 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 right? You don't, Samugi, you didn't see the picture of Amethyst and then meet Shion and then be like, huh. Huh. Interesting. Did she in the common route, though? And maybe I forgot. Because, like, I feel like Samugi would be very much the one to be like, you and figure that out. But, I mean, I guess it's because, again, technically, he was a child. Like, nine-year-old doesn't look like 20-something-year-old. You know what I mean? Um, But for us, the photo they show, you're like, oh, that's clearly Shion, just like. But he definitely didn't look nine. You're like, that's like 14-year-old Shion. So, you know what I mean? They made him look a lot more. So I'm assuming that the actual photo, like, in the game universe, didn't actually look like that. You know what I mean? It's for us. Because otherwise, like, hi, how do you look at that and go like, well, that looks like Shion. Weird. Like, you know what I mean? Eh. Anyway. That's terrifying. What did Shion say about what happened? He told me not to worry too much about it because it would all die down soon. I see. And maybe that means he had a hand in it somehow. What do you mean? And there was no follow-up coverage at all, which is unusual for this kind of story. If this were a normal news story, they would have dug deeper to figure out who Shion was. That reminds me. Oh yeah, he did, because he called that woman, so this is what he was doing. After it happened, Shion contacted Kasuga immediately. He seems to be used to this kind of thing. I wouldn't be surprised if he was working with someone other than Kasuga. I could see that. But the reason Rue was keeping quiet is because he promised Shion he would. Regardless, I feel bad that he's getting so much hate online. I'm still upset that he used me, but to think he's having that much trouble. Well, you know what? I'm, okay, here, here, here. I'm going to throw this out there. He did this to his fucking self. He did this to himself. Okay? Because he set you and Shion up to get ahead, and now it's biting him in the ass. I know he's nine, but maybe learn your fucking lesson, young man. Okay? How many times are we going to have to teach you this lesson, little man? I'm just... <laughs> but seriously. Like, he's nine. But like, hi, hard knock life kid. First of all, you live life in the spotlight. So, of course, there's always going to be backlash. Like, he blinked at the wrong time. What a rude bastard. You know what I mean? So, like, people are finicky assholes. Okay? You're always going to do one thing that pisses off one person. And then it's going to be a landslide. Okay? Like, you're like, that That really does, I mean, get over it? I don't know. Something now, ten years from now, someone's going to bitch about something like, oh, remember that time he did this? He was nine? But, like, so, like, Rue, you should be used to people being assholes. No one should harass you, like, just because you won't tell them something. You know what I mean? But, like, again, so, like, that, harassing him, threatening him, and him, what the fuck is wrong with you? To do that to anybody, let alone a nine-year-old. But also, like, people being like, Oh, selfish Jack! Oh, well, whatever! And, like, 
just saying shit like that, you did this to yourself. You know, people saying nasty things. I mean, there's a line, obviously, between, like, just people being, Ugh, he's a jackass. I don't like him anymore. You know? Because whatever, they're mad at you. And then people, like, literally threatening you and, like, threatening to come to your house or harm you or literally harassing you in public. You know what I mean? There's differences. But, like, but like people being mad at you online about it. Like, you did this to yourself, kid. If you hadn't forced that photo op and done this, you wouldn't be getting this backlash. So I'm just going to say, like, uh, you kind of deserve some of this. Again, not like actual, like, literal threats and harassment, but like, oh, no, boo-hoo, people are mad at you. Well, did it to yourself. Just saying. You know? Maybe that's not the only reason he's getting attacked. Again, if we talk about physical attacks, that's, like, totally fucking wrong. Like, no matter what he did. You know what I mean? But, like, people just, Ugh, you're a selfish bastard, Rue. We don't like you anymore. Oh, well. Like, huh? Have you seen the photo of Spacey? Yeah, once or twice. Well, no offense to Rue, but he pales in comparison when standing next to Xion. So does everyone. They were on totally different levels. Yeah, one's a child and one's a grown-ass man. But also, one is a grown-ass man that looks like Xion. I'm just saying. Um, I Personally, I think he's gorgeous. But, like, even our boyfriend's pale in comparison standing next to him. And they're all kind of hot, okay? But, like, Xion is by far the most goddamn gloriously beautiful. So, like... And I'm just gonna throw it out there. That Xion next to gorgeous male models would probably still kind of outshine them because, like, that's the whole purpose of Xion's existence, right? You know. Like, for God's sakes, even Ichi, as long as he keeps his mouth shut, you put him next to male models and you're like, I mean, Ichi is kind of like, ah, right? And then he opens his mouth and you're like, I, you're an idiot, but I love you. <laughs> anyway. Nevertheless... He looks like he's using Xion, which might be the reason he's getting hate online. Right, because he was. Is that what's happening? I, we're going to feel bad for this kid. I don't. Yes, I think so. But I guess you see the real thing every day, Species, so maybe it doesn't make sense for you. I don't see him that much, especially lately. Oh? What do you mean? You haven't seen him, but you live together. Why can't I do Samuki's voice? What is wrong with me? It's not right. I can tell it's not right, guys. I don't know. Look, I don't know. Yes, but I don't know. I'm like having trouble looking at him or something. Just mentioning Xion reminded me of what it felt like to hold his hand. I looked down in embarrassment and Samuki stared at me happily. <laughs> I understand now. You do? This calls for an emergency meeting. Yeah, she's just going to be off today. I don't understand. Later, after school. Okay, it's time for some girl talk. Why am I even here? <laughs> Why am I even here? Such a fucking mood, Arimura. Such a fucking mood. <laughs> that is like 90% of my day. Why am I even here? topic for today is the state of species budgeting romance burgeoning romance budgeting romance burgeoning, anyway budgeting burgeoning burgeoning romance it's not right i don't know anyway i don't think you have good burgeoning budgeting but it's like i've heard the word before and i know what it sounds like in my head but i can't say it what is wrong with me i think i'm having a seizure guy I can't do voices. I can't read words. Something is seriously not right in my brain today. Anyway. Anyway, I don't think that's the right word. Budgeting, burgeoning romance? Budgeting. You know what I mean? Like, I hear it in my head. I can hear someone say it in a sentence, but then I try to say it, and I'm like, no, that's not working. Like, it's like someone saying, like, tower, and you're like, twa, 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 what? Like, you can't say the word tower? Why? Okay, I'm moving past it. I don't know. Something's wrong. We spoke the other day, Spacey herself admitted that she didn't know whether she was in love or not. I attempted to make her fantasize about them as lovers, but she was much too shy and chuckled the whole idea out. 
But now, we have a new development. She can't look at Xion's gorgeous face without it sending sparks of joy down her spine. What? I did not say sparks of joy. What's happening to Spacey? And how does Xion truly feel? I love Smoogie's, like, fucking uwu face. Like, I just fucking love when she blushes because she's over there like, oh. <laughs> Smoogie's face is me when I see certain characters or, like, Jun Fukuyama voices them or, like, whatever. Like, you know, when you're like, oh. that fate, yeah, that's in my soul. That's, I get it. They drew that way too well. I can't handle it. Arimura and Smoogie, we will unreservedly question this budding maiden. Get ready to be put under a microscope, Spacey. Oh my god, you've got it so wrong. And don't even bother. Once Smoogie gets started, you just have to ride it out. Ugh. Well, Spacey, spill, girl. Don't spare any details. Uh, so... I guess we're doing this? Bird, stop. And with that, I summed up everything that had happened with Xion. And when I was feeling down about it, Xion consoled me. He said he didn't want to make me feel that way. He said that he wanted to take care of me and comfort me. Oh my, just, oh my goodness. Wow. All right. And then I became overly aware of it. I can't talk to him normally anymore or even look at him. That's it, Spacey. What? This is your charm! Your adorableness! I regret I couldn't see it unfold in real time! Uh... Seriously? Like, you've already pulled the lever. WHICH LEVER?! Why do we even have that lever? The... Lever? WRONG LEVER! The... Love lever? The <laughs> love lever?! <laughs> And you don't seem like a complete disaster, so why don't you just get with him? That's... how totally inappropriate! I need to think about it more if I'm gonna... get... with him. If it feels right, then it should be enough, right? Besides, like, what's there to think about? I lowered my voice and hesitantly explained. I was curious why he quit modeling, and I'm sure he had something traumatic happened in his past. But I don't know if it's okay to ask him about something like that. Well, that's the only way to find out. <laughs> She's like, I don't know if it's okay to ask. Well, you either ask or you don't. Like, <laughs> She's right. It's such a personal thing, so only he can tell you. But I missed my chance to do it. And besides, I still don't know if Xion likes me for who I really am. Maybe all he wants is a new patron, or... From what you've told us, it sounds like Xion has already fallen for you, Spacey. Samugi is like the only one who understands how everybody feels. She's like, Nayuta loves you. Are you sure? Yes! But he can't admit that he does. That's because he's an idiot and he doesn't know yet. <laughs> Samugi, no. Samugi is literally the player because she knows everything before it happens. She's like, oh yeah, you're totally going to get together. Don't worry about it. Emma, yes. Yes, girl. Because that's what we do in here. Also, her just over there like, oh, nice, the romance. Yeah, no, all of us. <laughs> I love Samuki so much. Totally. He wouldn't have said those things if he wasn't into you. But like, are you the type of girl who needs a guy to say, I love you first to feel comfortable? Isn't that how these things normally go? Not necessarily. If you're both feeling it, it's okay to go with the flow, you know? At least that's been my experience anyway. There was no way I could handle strategies meant for advanced players like her. So I panicked and changed the topic of conversation. Well, you know, to each her own, or whatever. But, um, Xion, he's... he's unemployed, you know? He's not even ashamed that he just wants to be a kept man. And obviously it'd be bad taste for the next head of the Tojo family to have a partner like that, right? For real? Honestly, girl, no one cares. What? Yes, she's right. I bet you can make plenty of excuses for him anyway. I'm sure your grandfather already knows all the dirt in him, and yet he's still a candidate, right? He's totally thinking about what he needs to do if he's chosen as your husband. But look, even if that were the case, how's it possible for me to have a spouse who's a kept man? Don't you think you're being a bit too persnickety? It's not like your family's going to fall apart just because you have to support one guy. 
<laughs> there are plenty of full-time house husbands these days, right? The important thing is how you feel about it, all Spacey. <laughs> well, it's still a very serious problem to me. After refuting my numerous counter-arguments, Arimura and Samuki now looked at each other, seemingly annoyed at my response. Why are you so freaking stubborn? Arimura and Taiga would be like really good together. <laughs> I am not! It's like you're looking for reasons to avoid admitting you're in love. Arimura's words pierced me to my core. I wasn't trying to do that. I didn't mean to. But I couldn't find the words to deny it. Well, now, I do understand what you're saying, Arimura, but let's also be considerate of her feelings, okay? A species very delicate, so she can't live by gut instincts like you do. I'll show you gut instinct! I couldn't argue with Arimura because she was absolutely right. I felt so disappointed with myself that I just stayed silent. Bird, I know, but could you stop attacking my headset, please? It's annoying. I love you, but if you don't like my headset, you don't have to be here. I'm sorry, I just, I can't click the button because I'm petting the bird right now. Hey, I'm back. Ah, welcome home. I'd been looking down when I walked through the door and unexpectedly ran into Shion. You were out rather late today, huh? Uh, yeah, I was having tea with Samugi. As I gave my awkward reply, I noticed my gaze wandering around again. I'm so pathetic. I can't believe I still can't look Shion in the eye, even after getting Samugi and Arimura's advice. It's okay, you know. Huh? You don't have to avoid me like that. I'm not going to be selfish and hit on you or do something like Ichia does, so you don't have to worry. I was completely surprised by what he said. It was as if he could see into even the corners of my mind. Why? Because you're more sensitive than most girls, aren't you? You're cautious and timid, so... I thought you might need some time to sort through your feelings. I'm not going to rush you. Take your time until you're ready to see me. Shion... Shion was kind in every sense of the word. He could have been offended given my recent behavior, but he's treating me as if everything is normal. I'm not sure if I'm happy or embarrassed. It's an odd feeling. I'll see you later, then. W wait a minute! I called to stop him from leaving. Um, I'm okay now. What? I was just a little confused, but I'm fine now. Shion's eyes widened in surprise, but he quickly smiled happily. All right. Thank you. Um, okay, bye! I was finally able to say what I wanted to say. Bye? <laughs> Relieved, I ran back to my room. Wait! What? I can't go upstairs. No, I need to go first! I'm just kidding. <sighs> the moment I got back to my room, I sighed and sat down on the spot. Although Samugi and Arimura gave me advice, I'm glad Shion gave me some space. I have to take my time with things. But I have to try really hard to get back to behaving like normal as soon as possible. <laughs> Ooh! There's, like, not a lot of choices going on. Oh! Oh, wow, there's one way down here. Holy Christ. Oh, and they both loop around. I'm gonna guess we do treat yourself, and then we'll do this, and then we do this one, because that's usually how it's been going top-down, so... Um... Treat yourself! Anyway... Shion always pampers me, and it's starting to get to me. He even pats me on the head like a cat! Well, I mean... And now you're like, I hate the- Oh, this is how we treat Nayuta. That's fine. He's, he's okay with it. <laughs> we treat him like a dog, but he wants to be treated like a dog. I mean, he wants you to take him on walks and throw balls for him. I'm just saying. I was walking back to my room after having dinner. <clears throat> Spacey, wait. Shion? Shion called out to me just as I was exiting the living room. He must have followed me. Could you come to my room for a minute? I promise I won't take up too much of your time. I was gonna do my homework now, but... Yeah, for a minute. Great, let's go then. I have to at least meet him halfway to make up for all the times I've avoided him. Looking back, following my whims at this moment may have been the start of everything. It's been a while since I've been in Xion's room. But I'm still nervous, as expected. Um... Yes? Shion was taking his time and preparing me a place to sit. I spoke up try to try and hurry him along. 
He's got an entire fucking couch behind him. How much shit does he have on it that he's got to clear a place for us to sit? I'm just saying. Why all so fucking messy? I mean, granted, people come to my house and I have to clear a space because it's like, there's 700 pillows and like eight blankets on the couch. So just figure it out. <laughs> but like, move, just throw them out of the way. So what did you want to talk to me about? Okay, so lately I've been trying to think of ways that I can spoil you, Spacey. Spoil me? I said so before, remember? And then I want to take care of you. His words brought to mind what he had mentioned earlier. I mean, okay, so like, hey, we're, she's concerned. He's a kept man and blah, blah, blah. And he's always the one getting pampered, but he wants to pamper us. That's kind of nice. It's not like, oh, I have this beautiful arm candy and I just, he uses my money and lives lavishly. And then I just get the benefit of a beautiful husband who might like only do a few little things for you just to like, oh, I've got to be nice. Oh, you're so beautiful, Barbara. Oh my God. Oh, you know, whatever. I'm just imagining we're an old lady named Barbara. Okay. I don't know. Whatever. But like, you know what I mean? He's just getting by doing the most minimal thing he has to do to keep the rich lady from getting realizing that he's just being she's just being used for money. And most of the time she knows she's like, he's just here for my money and like all the shit he gets out of it. But I don't care because he fawns over me in public and everybody is like, damn, girl, 20 year old hottie on your app. Right. You know what I mean? It's the whole thing. Okay. But, like, Shion is, like, instead of doing the minimum, he's like, oh, wait, 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 wait. I want to do all this freaking shit for you. And you're like, you can just stand there and look pretty. He's like, no, 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 wait. So I kind of like that. Like, you don't just stand there and look pretty and do the bare minimum. You want to go above and beyond and, like, pamper me, which is weird. But I'm here for it. It's weird because you're like, no one's ever really done that. So, wait, what? I'm very confused. <laughs> I don't have money. Well, she does, so technically we do, but you know what I mean? She's in that, like, are you just doing this for money? But it's like, he wouldn't go above and beyond. He would just do the bare minimum. Like, oh, you'd be like, um, Shion, so I'm feeling kind of lonely. I think, oh, okay, what do you want? You want to hang out and watch a movie? Great. But if he didn't have to, he wouldn't. You know what I mean? Coast by doing the bare minimum just to keep his Lux lavish life going. So he doesn't have to go above and beyond like he is. He's like, I want to pamper you. I want to do this. And it's like, on one hand, you're used to having to do some things to keep your patrons, you know, invested. But I do feel like he does, like, want to go over the top. He's pampering us in a different way than, like, Ichia with food and cheesy lines. Ichia, I hope you're going to love me when you have to roll me down the stairs because of all the food you keep feeding me. I'm just saying. It's all going to my stomach, honey. Like, and it's not just eating it. I mean, it's just, I'm, I'm going to balloon up. I have the problem just looking at food and getting fatter. Ichi, you're not helping. I'm just saying. But, you know, Ichi is a feeder. Oh, that's a problem. <laughs> that's a problem, Ichi. Uh, anyway. Oh. I don't hate the flashback to this CG because I love looking at his beautiful, sad profile. I mean, he doesn't even look sad. It's just he's got the, like, the, the sleepy, which, like, the bedroom eyes, but could also be, like, sad eyes, you know, depending. It's a wistful look. Yeah. You think it's wrong to depend on someone or let them spoil you. That's why I want to take care of you, Spacey. What a gorgeous man to pamper me for no reason. I just don't have money, so I guess that's a problem. <laughs> well, I don't need to be spoiled. I know. I just want to do it. What are you freaking out about, bird? When you do that, I don't like it. What? That's like your bug radar. Ow, your toenails. Fuck. Anyway. He admits it so easily. So anyway, I've been thinking about this a lot and thought I'd start off with this. Huh? Pat, pat on head. There you go. She and then gently scooped a small portion of my hair from my shoulders. What are you doing? Stay still. He intently examined the ends of my hair. Are you going to trim my ends and give me hair care maintenance? That's nice, but not what I was expecting. For a moment, I thought he was trying to make a move on me, but it didn't seem that way. You have beautiful hair, Spacey. It's very well taken care of. There are no split ends and it feels nice and smooth. 
hair care maintenance. Okay. I mean, I'm not complaining. Sure. That's nice. Somebody else knows better about my hair care and can be like, here's all the stuff you need. Awesome. Make it easier for me. Um, thank you. Is he really just complimenting my hair? <laughs> this would also be weird. I want to pamper you. You have nice hair. Okay. <laughs> Ajeeves told me you use hair products your salon recommends. Is that right? Yeah, why do you ask? Hmm, there's nothing wrong with that, but I think your hair could shine a little bit more. Have you ever thought about looking for something that suits your hair better? Uh, I haven't really... You know, there are salons where you can create your own original products with ingredients and scents crafted especially for your hair. What kind of fucking fancy salons are you going to? Definitely not going to the supercuts on the corner. Or if you're me in quarantine, you were like, I'm going to trim my own ends. And now you're like, oh, I just do that. Whatever, fine. <laughs> Don't ever go do my, I just do my own hair. So it's probably a mess. I do what they, what Brad Mondo tells you not to do. Like he's got his whole, like how to trim your hair thing. And I was like, I can't reach that far back to do that. He's like, if you split it in the middle and just like pull it forward and then trim, you get like the weird, instead of the straight across, it kind of tapers in the back. I'm like, yeah, that works for me. <laughs> what not to do? I don't give a shit. Like the straight blunt across. Ah, fuck it. It's going to look all wonky on the end. Like the back is not going to be straight across ever when it starts to grow out and your hair is different. Like, you know what I mean? It's always going to be like that weird layery. So it's fine. No one notices my hair is up 90% of the time, so what ups? <laughs> I am what not to do. <laughs> so, like, salons, you can make your own products? Really? Because usually they just go, oh, here, you have to buy this $20 shampoo, which is, like, color, tr it's for your, your hair. And then two washes later, your color that you just dyed your hair is completely rinsed out, and you're like, uh... If that was going to happen, I could still get the $5, like, two-gallon jug of fucking shampoo, like, off the freaking getting on the fancy $20 bottle that's just going to strip my hair just as much. I'm just saying. You get some, like, Tresemme shit. You get the store brand shit. Whatever. It's going to do the same crap. You don't need the $300 shampoo. But, like, specially formulated and all that shit. Sure. Maybe. But no salon does that around here. What the hell? Again, I go to, like, the... It's going to cost me $20 to trim my hair. Cool. <laughs> or again, I just don't. I do it myself. now. <laughs> wow. Well, oh, how ratchet is spacey. This ratchet. Okay. Anyway, we could go together sometime. If you're up for it, we could even go this weekend. Hold on. Wait just a minute. What's wrong? I don't need specially crafted stuff. What I've got now is good enough. But you know that it'll make your hair even prettier, right? Uh, don't worry, I guarantee it. That's not what I'm talking about. I just, it's not necessary. Why not? Because it'd be too extravagant. I do like that we're slightly like, oh, I get nice hair stuff. And he's like, you could get even more expensive. And you're like, yeah, I don't need that level of extravagance. You know how much money you have, right? But like, good for you. You know what I mean? As opposed to like, oh, I bought this. It's $700 shampoo because I'm rich. And you're like, it works just as well as the $10 bottle. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? But you just buy it because it's expensive. Look at my Gucci purse. Look at my $10 one from Target. It's better. I don't, you know what I mean? It's all preference. Like, but like, I just like the fact that she's not like, oh, I have to get the most expensive lavish shit. She's like, my hair is fine. I don't have to spend that much money on shampoo. And he's like. But you can. <laughs> mm. I get that, though. I'm like, um, what's the cheapest shampoo? And I'm like, I don't want to spend that much money. I don't have to wash my hair. But like, damn it. <laughs> like, Extravagant. You really think so? Aren't the products you use now already high-end brands? Your clothes and makeup are pretty fancy, too. I think it's too late to worry about extravagance. As a Tojo, these things are necessary for me. It's not that I like luxury products, but I'd be ashamed as the Tojo family heir if I didn't wear something appropriate. People are always watching me, you know? And it's like, I have to have expensive shit because people are watching me. He's like, yeah, so instead of the $100 bottle, we're going to get the 120 But that's too much for you? Like, <laughs> She just totally flip-flopped on what she just said. So you're saying it's okay to spend money on something you're obligated to use, 
but not on your hobbies or something you like. Basically, okay, there we're getting to it, but your hair, you're obligated to have nice hair. That's what you're thinking, so why can't you get fancier stuff that does the same thing, maybe better, and that you enjoy as well? I'm just saying. No, no, I'll just get the stuff that's just good for my hair. Not the stuff that's good for my hair, but then I also enjoy it. She's crazy. I see. When I told him how I honestly felt, Shion exhaled with heartfelt sadness. I mean, it's crazy. I don't like the idea that something luxurious should be bad. And no one should feel bad about liking nice things that enrich one's mind and life. Money notwithstanding, of course. And not to mention, people who are hard on themselves like you should be more extravagant. Isn't it important to surround yourself with things you like, or things that are special so you can lead your best life? I'm not sure. In that sense, I think you should learn how to treat yourself sometimes, you know? He's not wrong. But I told him I'm not interested in spending money on things I don't need. Because what I have right now is good enough. And think about it this way. Your hair would be a lot silkier than it is now, right? Wouldn't that make you happy? Don't you enjoy making yourself look beautiful? Especially as a girl? I don't know. And wouldn't you say spending money on hair care is usual for girls your age? If spending time on yourself makes you happy, then you can use it as a reward to work harder. Life's more fun when you figure out how to get the things you want, rather than denying yourself just because you're not allowed to want something. Well, it's not like I'm depriving myself of every little thing or something. I'm just not interested, that's all. I'm not so sure. It must be difficult being you, Spacey. You have the means to be happy, but you intentionally deny yourself of them. Sheehan started stroking my hair as he talked to himself. The sensation of his fingers carefully and gently combing through my hair tickled a bit. What to do? I didn't resist and kept silent. Then Sheehan affectionately caressed my head more. Hmm. What? <gasps> what are you doing? I'm running my fingers through your hair. Wait, what? Oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. Embarrassment city! I'm freaking out! But it also feels kind of good. But still super embarrassing! Please, don't. I managed to say something, even though I was emotionally all over the place. She looked at me, suddenly taken aback. Okay, I think I get it. Get what? You'll see. Shion smoothly removed his hand from my hair, a mischievous grin playing on his face. As soon as he did, the warm feeling I'd been experiencing suddenly disappeared, and for some reason, I felt a little sad. I think I'll let go of the hair products for now. There's no point forcing them on you, right? Right. Good. Well, sorry for taking up so much of your time. Good luck with your homework. Shion waved to me as if he was saying bye. I left his room, confused as to why he seemed so satisfied. What in the world did he figure out? Because he's like stroking her, and you're like, stop! And then you go in, and you're like, oh, I'm sad. And he's like, yeah. You'll miss this shit. <laughs> and why did he suddenly seem so agreeable? Per usual, I didn't understand him. I repeatedly took deep breaths to calm my pounding heart, despite my confusion. And before I realized it, my hand was touching the spot where Shion's fingers had combed through my hair. When was the last time someone even did that to me? Maybe like your mom when you were a baby? A child, you know? Oh, I don't think anyone ever has. Kasuga and I may be close, but he knows doing something like that would cross the line. Uh, we can dream! <sighs> Samugi's just a regular friend, so she wouldn't do that sort of thing. So I think this is the first time I've experienced something like this. It felt pretty good. What? No! That was nothing! I'm imagining things! I walked back to my room at a brisk pace while admonishing myself the whole way there. No choices again on this one, huh? Oh, nope. Um, ooh. Gonna guess empty heart. Because it's directly related to this one. Yep, okay. <sighs> she looks for new ways to spoil me. A bolt of inspiration delivers the correct answer. <sighs> I 
My mind wandered as I flipped through a fashion magazine. Oh, whoops, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> ah. I'm still a little disappointed that she wouldn't let me do more for her hair. I had so many good recommendations to her, for her about hair products. She was as wealthy as they come, but she didn't act like it, which made it difficult for me. I think she should be more open-minded. Besides... Hi, Shion! What you up to? Hey, Nayuta. I looked up and saw Nayuta smiling happily at me. Seeing that puppy-like face gave me an idea. Nayuta leaned down for a second. What's up? I deliberately didn't explain and just started petting his head. Huh? I don't know what's going on, but are you rewarding me for something? <laughs> he's just petting Nayuta and he's like, did I do something good? Oh my god, Nayuta really is a dog. Oh, I mean, uh, it never gets old. It's funny every single time. Yes, a good boy, Nayuta. Good boy. We're all done, so you can go play now. Okay! I wonder what that was for. Oh well, whatever. And now you did tilted his head to the side for a split second, and then scampered out of the living room in high spirits. You see, he's used to being petted. And when I pet him, he feels happy, like I'm praising him. Not in Spacey's case, though. Instead, she just got confused. <laughs> She's like a cat. You're pet like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? Did I initiate? Don't touch me. Meanwhile, a dog is like, oh, pets? I did something good? You're petting me? Awesome. Okay. Why? I don't care. Doesn't matter. Like Nayuta. Totally the difference, right? She looked completely baffled when I touched her head, like it was a mystery. Well, again, because Kasuga doesn't pat me on the head when I do my homework like a good girl. It's rude. He should. Hi? I've been waiting for you. Waiting? You mean right here? The whole time? Uh, come on, I'm not Nayuta. I came to see you after hearing the car outside. Oh, right. How was school? I'm sure it was a breeze for you. Pat, pat. I walked up to Spacey and caressed her head as a gesture of affection. And then she froze up. And going by her expression, she didn't seem to know how to react. My bird, every time I try to go to pet him sometimes. I don't know if he thinks I'm going to come and choke him or some shit. Like, if he's snuggling with you and you pet him, he's fine. But sometimes you just walk up to go to pet him and he's like, deer in headlights. He's like, ah, what are you doing? And you're like, I'm just going to pet you. And he's like, oh, okay. It's like, bird, what did you think I was going to do? Come up and like poke you in the eye? Like, I don't know. But literally his face. Ah, what's happening? Why are you doing this? Why are you petting me? Like, he gets so confused sometimes. <laughs> Strange. He, like, and again, he does that, I don't know how to react. Like, what? I don't, am I, uh? I see. So if my prediction is correct, then. No, go try petting Taiga. See what happens. I went into the hallway near the entrance and found Jeeves just as he was about to leave. <gasps> Kasuga. You so much. Are you going out? Yes, because Miss Spacey will be home presently. And now if you'll... In just a moment. Oh my god, are you gonna pet fucking... Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm sorry, but if you pet fucking Kasuga, there better be a fuck NZG of that. Yes. Have you ever caressed Spacey's head before? Oh, I really just wanted him to go up and pet Kasuga, and Kasuga's like, what are you doing? Like, and I want a CG of it. I can't stop imagining it in my head now. You're welcome. I'm sorry. I don't know. It's going to haunt you forever. It's beautiful. It's the kind of thing you want to haunt you forever. Just imagining Shion petting Kasuga. And just... Oh, you can see Kasuga's little face. Kasuga secretly enjoys it. So you can see the look on his face. Shy and embarrassed, but loving it all the same. You know, you're welcome. I can't stop thinking about that. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I... Beg your pardon? I knew the question was abrupt, even for me. Jeeves eyed me suspiciously as if he were trying to figure out what I was really asking. But I absolutely needed to know this. I am Miss Spacey's butler, not her lover. Do not entertain false notions about me. 
Kasuga, this hurts. I mean, true, you are my butler, not my lover yet. But like, th this whole denial of like, how dare you? I would never. <gasps> Kasuga. Ugh. The game might take me away from you or take you away from me, but how dare you take yourself first? <laughs> Let me live in my delusion. This might be the worst that any the worst thing anyone in any game has ever said to me. It's the most hurtful thing. <laughs> but it really does hurt me though, because I love him so much. Jeeves spat out the words like venom as I stood there staring at him. And then he left. Although that, how dare you? And then storms off. I don't know. Or that's like absolute, like you're just, methinks the lady doth protest too much. Because you've been thinking about it, haven't you, Kasuga? I'm going to go with that. I feel better about that. Thanks. Look, I know the game is going to bitch slap me in the face and all this is going to sound crazy and weird. And those of you who know Kasuga's secret are like, oh, girl. But like, I'm just saying. I guess he's right. Jeeves doesn't look at Spacey that way. That's for sure. Uh, stop it! Stop it, game! Let me live in my delusions! Why do you keep taking them away? And then I keep like, no, it's fine. It's totally okay. And then they're like, no, it's not. Stop! Game! Otherwise, she wouldn't rely on him without hesitation. However, this confirmed my predictions. <laughs> that Kasuga doesn't love me? I can't even live in my delusions. The game keeps really trying to rip it away from me, and I don't like it. So what does Spacey need the most? I need Kasuga to stop denying his feelings and just love me already. And I need the game to not make him my brother, uncle, cousin, whatever. Okay? Stop. Unconditional love. You're telling me Kasuga doesn't love me unconditionally? That's just... It's only conditional? Huh? <gasps> Stop! The game is rude. I don't like it. Oh, when I first saw her, I thought her, I thought her armor of thorns was to protect her tender heart, but I was wrong. It was the opposite. She didn't receive the love she needed, so she had no choice but to stubbornly build an emotional barrier to protect herself. <gasps> You're making Kasuga sound like a horrible person. Stop it. Well, I mean, he's always been professional. He might love us, but maybe he's not allowed to. Shh. Look, I will do anything to not have my delusions of Kasuga's love for me and my love for him be taken away from me, okay? Game, I'm gonna need you to stop. We're gonna have to start drinking when we play this if you keep this up, okay? I can't handle it. Why? <laughs> but seriously, why? Why, game? Stop. It's like before the game let you, it was like, look, Kasuga, ah, and then you get here and it's like, oh, did, did you think that? No, wrong. I know we led you to think that, but fuck you, you're wrong. <gasps> fuck you, game. Fuck you. And now I see. I don't. I thought my first priority was to get her to like me, but it looks like there's something else I need to do before that. Depend on no one. Be strong. That's what was expected of the Tojo family heir. So I needed to create a safe place for this girl, driven by those all-consuming expectations. That should have been one whole sentence, but I read it like two, sorry. Where I could fill her heart with unconditional love. To allow her to accept herself. To show her it's okay to be who she really is, and to be vulnerable. Bird, please stop shoving your head out of my headset. And my hunch was right after all. I'm a perfect fit for her. Because forgiveness is my specialty. No, no, not the end. Oh. That's the sound of a car. Spacey must be home. I excitedly went to greet her, but she wasn't there yet. I knew she'd be coming in soon enough. Just thinking about her brought a smile to my face. I'm Hi, I'm back. Welcome home, Spacey. What is it? Why are you making that face? Oh, no reason. I then abruptly approached her and... I tested giving her head a gentle caress. Why did you touch my head? Did you not like it? I didn't say that. And then it's fine, right? Uh... Do you not want me to? No, if you want to, you can keep doing it. Because Kasuga won't! And the game won't let him! Spacey was confused, but I kept caressing her head. 
Miss Macy tensed up, but she also closed her eyes slightly as if she were enjoying it, even though it confused her. Okay, see you later. Okay? As satisfied, I went back to my room after confirming my theory. He's like, I pet her head and be like, do you not like it? Mm, like, me, I, what? I don't know. Yeah, I think that was the right answer after all. Judging from Spacey's reaction just now, I'm doing the right thing. All that was left was to follow through. <laughs> look forward to it, Spacey. Oh, I do. I do, Shion. I look forward to it. I look forward to the game letting me marry Kasuga. That's never going to happen, but like, delusions! No matter what this game has tried to do in that part, I will keep... Nope, Kasuga is in love with me and just can't pet me on the head because he's not allowed to. It also, though, ruins some of my delusions that I had about our relationship in my head in the game. It's like, no, he's never done that. <gasps> what? Even when I was sick, he didn't pat me on the head? Nothing? Really? Okay. Rude. Anyway. Um, I'm going to guess we go to the Tojo family influence next, but we are... Oh, no! Oh, no, no! No, no. Oh, oh, we go here. Okay. Well, anyway. We'll rem try to remember that for the next part. Uh, so, yeah. I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.